Hello everybody, this is Dr. Abdelkader Ashur. Uh, today we are going to talk about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. We will talk about their mechanism of action, why they are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, their pharmacological actions, and their mechanism based side effects if that's what you're looking for let's get to it first off let us start with the mechanism of action of NSAIDs uh, the story starts from the phospholipids phospholipids in the cell membrane these phospholipids uh, under the effect of phospholipase A2 enzyme that that degrades phospholipid to so phospholipid phospholipase easy right it's, uh, it degrades uh, the ester bond at the uh, carbon number two in the glycerol moiety of the uh, phospholipids. Uh, when there is inflammatory or myogenic stimuli free radicals, this enzyme will be activated. It will then uh, uh, split. Uh, phospholipids and release arachidonic acid, abbreviated as AA. Okay, my name also abbreviated AA, but I am not in the cell membrane. Okay, uh, so this arachidonic acid will be then a substrate for either cyclooxygenase enzyme or lipoxygenase enzyme. Cyclooxygenase COX will uh, act on arachidonic acid and produce these prostanoids prostaglandins prostacyclins prostacyclins sorry and thromboxane start with prostaglandins they are inflammatory mediator but in addition they have also housekeeping function such as uh, 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 gastro protection renal protection in the stomach, they increase the uh, sodium bicarbonate secretion, increase mucus secretion, inhibit HCL secretion, and inhibit gastrin secretion. So they have their housekeeping function, as well as they are also inflammatory mediators, which will be explained in the next com coming slides. Then uh, these two uh, players, I uh, highlighted them with each other because both of them they act on almost the same tissues. They, ha they are uh, antagonists to each other, or they are opposite each other, function-wise. Uh, I would like almost to start with thromboxane. Thrombo. Thromboxane. Okay? This gives you a clue. It works on what? Yes. It works on thrombocytes, platelets. So they induce, this thromboxane induces uh, platelet aggregation and it has vasoconstrictor effect. This will help me in preventing bleeding, right? And stopping bleeding. Uh, the prostacyclin is the opposite of thromboxane. Okay? Can you predict the function of prostacyclin? I'll give you a second. Yes. It's antiplatelet aggregatory and it's vasodilator. This prostanoid can prevent thrombosis. So it can ensure fluidity of the blood in the blood vessels and prevent thromboembolism. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. The next player is the uh, leukotrienes formed by the action of lipoxygenase locks on arachidonic acid. Okay. Uh, uh, the action of lipoxygenase on arachidonic acid will produce uh, uh, heat, which is hydroxy tetraenoic acid, leukotriene, and, leupo and lipoxins. It's too much to talk about all of these. I'll just talk about a little bit brief about leukotrienes. It, it needs, it needs uh, another lecture in the next coming future. Uh, leukotrienes, uh, I just selected one action of them again on the bronchial asthma or in the bronchi, generally speaking. They are bronchoconstrictor and they induce uh, uh, mus, uh, mucus secretion. So they increase mucus secretion and they are bronco, severe bronchoconstrictor. 
Why I'm saying that? We'll see that later. Okay, so now we finished with the normal physiology and biochemistry. Let us talk about pharmacology now. Okay, so the first class we will use is the corticosteroids. Corticosteroids. These guys, corticosteroids such as uh, dexamethasone, hydrocortisone, beclomethasone, very big class of drugs. They inhibit phospholipase A2 enzyme. If they inhibit this guy, they inhibit the whole mechanism, right? So they will inhibit the formation or release of arachidonic acid. And in turn, you will have the prostaglandin, prostacyclin, thromboxane, leukotriene, all of these will be, their uh, synthesis will be inhibited. Easy? Okay. That's why they are very potent anti-inflammatory drugs. This is for corticosteroids. Move one step further. Okay. You have LOX and COX. So the next station will be inhibition of COX. Bye. Today's player, which is uh, the class of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs such as aspirin, diclofenac, pyroxicam, ketoprofen, ibuprofen, and so many other drugs. These drugs inhibit cyclooxygenase and in turn will inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins, and this is the mechanism of action of these drugs. So they inhibit the uh, uh, synthesis of prostaglandin, which itself is an inflammatory, an inflammatory mediator, as will be explained in the next coming slides. Um, the second station is the leukotriene inhibitors. Yes, leukotriene lipoxygenase inhibitors. Lipoxygenase inhibitors, okay, um, from among from this class, is the uh, diclofenac and ketoprofen. They are LOX inhib inhibitors, okay, LOX inhibitors. So they will inhibit the synthesis of leukotrienes. Okay, here is, there is a very important, you notice here there is a precursor, which is arachidonic acid. There are two pathways. If you inhibit one pathway, the other pathway will work much more, right? So the, the, if you inhibit by non-steroid and anti inflammatory drugs, the COX, most of the arachidonic acid will go through this pathway and produce more leukotriates. Why I'm saying that? I'm saying that because of patients with bronchial asthma. What's the relationship? Bronchial asthma with whatever I'm talking about. Okay, I'll let you know. So if you inhibit COX using non-steroid and anti inflammatory drugs, so this pathway is blocked. Arachidonic acid will have only an another pathway, which is the LOX. So more production of leukotrienes. As we said before, leukotrienes are severe bronchoconstrictors, and they induce mucus secretion. So this will hurt the patient of bronchial asthma, will aggravate the situation. That's why these drugs, uh, non steroidal and anti-inflammatory drugs, are uh, contraindicated, or at least taken under precaution, specifically aspirin, and other, actually, all non steroid and anti inflammatory drugs are taken with precaution. They are, they call it aspirin asthma or pseudo allergy. You know now the mechanism inhibition of COX, more of production of leukotriene, they are severe bronchoconstrictor and they induce mucus secretion. Okay. Okay. Uh, COX itself, there are three ID enzymes. So I'm not going to talk about them uh, now, but we'll talk about them later COX 1, COX 2, and COX. Okay. Now the pharmacological actions of these drugs. They this this class of drugs have three pharmacological actions: anti-inflammatory effect, analgesic, and antipyretic. Please remember these actions. Okay. Number one, anti-inflammatory. Again, all of them are depending on the inhibition of prostaglandins. They inhibit prostaglandin. What the prostaglandin has to do with inflammation? Yes, they induce vasodilatation, edema by facilitating and potentiating the action of histamine and pain by sensitizing the nociceptive receptor, the receptor, the pain receptors to the action of inflammatory mediators such as bradykinin. 
Okay. Then the second effect, as we said, is the analgesic effect. The analgesic effect. Uh, again, they uh, inhibit the production of prostaglandin. Okay, they are effective against uh, mild to moderate pain, such as arthritis, uh, pain of muscular or uh, vascular origin, toothache, backache, dysmenorrhea, and many other uh, uh, sources of pain. Uh, mechanism: they act peripherally by decreasing the production of prostaglandins. Okay. Prostaglandins, as we said, they sensitize the nociceptive receptors, nociceptors which are the pain receptors to the action inflammatory mediators uh, such as bradykinin. Okay, centrally they inhibit also the prostaglandin synthesis within the spinal cord. So this is the analgesic effect. Okay, the third effect is the antipyretic effect. They lower body temperature when it is raised only, okay? But they don't affect the normal temperature. Uh, the mechanism, again, through the inhibition of prostaglandin. Prostaglandin uh, in, uh, production in the hypothalamus will mess up with the thermal seat point. What's thermal seat point? Like what you have in your air conditioner, in your refrigerator. There are these thermostats that regulate the temperature. In our body, there is also thermal seat point in the hypothalamus that adjusts the temperature of the body to be at 37 degrees centigrade. Okay, there are, if you are in a hot environment, they will activate heat dissipation mechanisms like sweating. And if you are in a cold environment, they will activate heat production in, uh, uh, mechanisms such as uh, uh, shivering and others. So uh, this is the normal. When uh, uh, prostaglandin production is enhanced in the hypothalamus, will mess up with the uh, thermal seat point, and this will uh, mess up with the temperature regulatory mechanism. So the, 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 the thermal seat point will be adjusted to support like 39 or 40. So the body will understand, oh, I need to reach the to the temperature of 40. So they increase the heat production mechanism until it becomes 40. So uh, during infection, a bacteria and the toxin will cause the release of interleukin-1. It's called pyrogen because this will increase the temperature, by the temperature, interleukin-1 from the macrophages. And this will stimulate the production of prostaglandin A, which will elevate the thermal set point to maybe 39, 40 degree, uh, 41 in the hypothalamus and fever will occur. Finally, we uh, will talk about the mechanism-based side effects. See, it's easy. See, here the mechanism helped us in knowing the mechanism of action, the pharmacological action, and even the side effects. It's like easy, right? Yeah, okay. So they can cause the peptic ulcer, they can reduce the blood flow causing renal failure, they intended to enhance the bleeding time through inhibition of platelet function through the inhibition of thromboxin, as we said before. The mechanism, again, is related to the primary action of non and anti inflammatory drugs through the inhibition of COX, and hence the inhibition of the production of prostaglandins and thromboxin. To recap, we talked today about one of the most commonly prescribed uh, drugs in the whole world, which is the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We talked about their mechanism of action by inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis through inhibition of the enzyme cyclogenase COX. We also talked about the corticosteroids, which inhibit phospholipase A2. They are steroids. So our class of drug is non-steroid. Third, we talked about the uh, pharmacological actions anti-inflammatory, analgesic, and antipyretic effects. We end, we finished with the uh, mechanism-based side effects, which include peptic ulcer, renal failure, and inhibition of platelet aggregation. All of these effects were mediated by inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis through inhibition of COX. That's all for today. I hope it was beneficial. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any comments, by all means, 
Leave them in the comment section below. I'll catch you in my next video. Have a great day.